Today's webinar is called Seven Best Practices, The Search Marketer's Guide to Connected TV. Um, so giving this presentation, we have Human Javedan Najad, the Director of Performance Marketing at Mountain. So I'll hand it over to you, Human. Thanks very much. I really appreciate it, Troy. It's a uh, pleasure and a uh, great opportunity for me to be in a uh, conversation with my peers, B2B marketers, and uh, I'm really uh, excited for today's topic, particularly because, you know, we're going to talk about paid search and paid search is the number one channel that all of us as B2B marketers, uh, that's the number one channel that we think about when we think about uh, uh, paid advertising, uh, paid search is number one channel. And today we want to talk about what are the similarities, what are the paid search skills that you already have masters, uh, what are those skills that now you can take to connect the TV advertising and uh, unlock uh, this, this channel for B2B. So, uh, we have never seen anybody else uh, covering this topic, so it's pretty uh, new, pretty unique, and uh, we are very uh, excited to, to talk through this uh, topic today. Uh, once again, I want to welcome uh, everybody joining us today, giving your uh, precious time to listen in. I am uh, joining from Los Angeles. It's beautiful and sunny today. And I uh, uh, hope you guys are also enjoying your day, wherever uh, you're joining from. So a little bit of uh, introduction to what our team does at uh, Mountain. My team and I are responsible for creating new demand for Mountain, capturing the existing demand, driving pipeline and revenue, and also measuring the impact of everything that we do on revenue and growth. So that's uh, what our team does. And I myself, uh, as a responsible for performance marketing at Mountain, and I started my career as a digital marketer with doing a lot of search engine marketing, a lot of SEO work, search engine optimization, and then right after that, uh, handling a lot of paid channels, namely uh, Google paid search, a lot of LinkedIn advertising, um, paid social sites, also Facebook, Twitter, even Quora advertising. So really hands-on experience on pretty much all the channels that uh, B2B marketers use to drive uh, revenue and growth. And I am excited to share with you some of those learnings from uh, our paid search campaigns, uh, and particularly the ones that can be extended to uh, connected TV advertising. So uh, let's dig in here. Uh, we have uh, 51 people, 50, now 52, uh, joining this, this session. So I'm uh, very uh, excited uh, to, do, to dig in. Uh, so today's uh, key takeaway is that connected TV is an up, untapped performance channel for B2B advertiser. So when I talk to a lot of my peers, to B2B marketers and advertisers about connected TV advertising, they tell me that, oh, TV advertising, it's not for me. I'm not there yet. It's not for B2B. And that is no longer true. And uh, that's the promise of this um, webinar today to provide you with a visibility, how you can uh, treat Connected TV as a performance channel, how you can activate it and un unlock it uh, for uh, your company that you're responsible to drive growth and revenue. And uh, the interesting uh, part of this webinar is that we're gonna talk about the exact same paid search tactics and best practices and skills that you have already implemented and now you can take the exact same concepts to connected TV advertising. You will be surprised because when you hear paid search, it's just a text ad. You run an activate on Google and connected TV advertising is a video creative on TV. So you might think that these two channels has nothing in common, but you will be surprised that how much um, similarities exist between these two channels. First of all, they're both 
performance channels. Paid search is a performance channel. Connected TV advertising is also a performance channel uh, today. It wasn't like that 10 years ago, but technology has uh, enabled um, TV advertising, connected TV advertising to be a performance channel. And you will be able to drive measurable performance with connected TV. Let's uh, dig into today's agenda. So uh, number one, we're gonna talk about why connected TV is now a viable solution for B2B advertisers. Then we're gonna go right into seven key tactics that you can borrow from your paid search campaign and implement that to connected TV advertising. And, and lastly, we're gonna talk about what each of those paid search tactics means uh, uh, on connected TV for search marketers. So uh, starting off with uh, why we believe connected TV is a channel for B2B marketers. And, uh, and we believe this is in fact, the biggest opportunity for B2B marketers because uh, I don't know a lot of B2B marketers doing connected TV advertising for B2B. And for that reason, it's like a blue ocean. Nobody is there. Your competitor is not running that. Your competitor is doing paid search and you have to beat against the exact same keyword that they are beating on. Your competition is doing a lot of paid social, a lot of LinkedIn advertising. They're getting a ton of content, white paper download. They're doing a lot of webinars a lot of nurturing emails and all that, but your competitors are not doing connected TV advertising. So it's a bluish ocean, it's a white space. And for that reason, we believe it's the biggest opportunity for uh, B2B marketers. And why we believe this channel works for B2B advertisers. Number one, with connected TV advertising, you can do precision targeting the exact same way that you do granular audience targeting across all the other digital channels. You can do the, the exact same precision targetings on connected TV. You can target by job titles, the same way that you do it on LinkedIn. You can uh, target by, based on the company sizes and you can make sure that you're really hitting your core ideal target audience. And so for that reason, no impressions are wasted unlike linear TV advertising, traditional TV advertising, which you didn't have any of these targeting criteria. On connected TV advertising, you actually have a ton of targeting capabilities to make sure that you get to the audience that you need to target. Number two, for connected TV advertising, you no longer need uh, those expensive, high produced uh, video creatives. You can, if you already are running videos on social media, you can uh, very likely repurpose those video assets and use it for connected TV advertising. Or if you don't even have that, uh, there are video uh, marketplaces like uh, QuickFrame is one example, is now part of Mountain. They are a uh, marketplace for video production. They are literally U Uber, or Airbnb, but for video production. They have a network of uh, all the peoples and skills that you need to get a video produced. Uh, you go there, you create your project as a marketer or advertiser, video uh, creators bid on your project, and then uh, QuickFrame is handling the whole uh, process and delivery of the video, and you will be able to also uh, measure uh, the performance of those video creatives. And it's very affordable. Uh, and I think this is something that B2B absolutely loves because video creative is no longer a barrier. It's not that expensive. It's hassle-free uh, to get uh, limitless uh, uh, video uh, for both your social media and also for connected TV advertising. Lastly, we believe B2B needs CTV because you can measure performance of your uh, video creatives, your TV ads, <clears throat> just like any other digital channel. How are you guys measuring your digital ads performance today? You most probably are 
uh, looking at uh, Google Analytics to see what was the share of traffic driven from that channel and look at source and medium report. We look at um, conversions report, reported in Google Analytics to see what source and medium drove the highest number of conversions. And you optimize based on uh, those measurements. Uh, connected TV is now another digital channel, fully measurable, and you can see the exact same results <clears throat> from your CTV campaign alongside any other digital channel in Google Analytics, which is very cool. So let's, this is my last slide before digging into those seven best practices. And um, what I love about these stats here is that it's really telling a, a, a nice story here. So this is from eMarketer and this shows year over year, digital ad dollars spend growth for B2B brands. In 2020, year over year growth, so 20, 2020 compared to 2019, year over year, digital ad spend for B2B brands was declined by just over 16%. Why? Because it was pandemic in 2019. And so for that reason, uh, I'm sorry, uh, end of 2019, beginning of 2020. And for that reason, in 2020, a lot of B2B brands uh, started to uh, pause uh, their campaigns across all the channels and uh, or they uh, scaled back on their ad dollars spend, even if they didn't uh, fully pause. So that explained 2020. Then in 2021, we learned how to live with uh, this uh, phenomenon with pandemic. So. Consumers were spending, advertisers and marketers respectively started to spend more. So we were uh, back with just over 11% growth in digital ad dollars spent. Uh, 2022, uh, a little bit back to normal, but the growth was not as uh, crazy as 2021 because that growth is partly because of back to normal. 2022, it's not that much of growth. And 2023, is just below 1%. The growth rate projected by uh, eMarketer for B2B brands, not even 1% growth. The reason for that is that B2B marketers are reaching a plateau across the ad channels that you're using today. Let's be honest. If you're a B2B marketer, you're doing a ton of paid search, probably spending most of your ad dollars on paid search because it works. And also after that, LinkedIn, because you can do account-based targeting based on job titles, functions, all that jazz. And then you are spending a little bit on the other social channels, Facebook, et cetera. And then everybody is doing the same, white paper download, webinars, email nurture, top leadership pieces, and all that. And so once ad B2B marketers and advertisers reach to a level that exhausts all those channels and opportunities, then uh, there is no way basically to scale. Uh, let's talk about paid search. Uh, for paid search, for a lot of B2B marketers, there is a limited number of search volume. And uh, even if you do an excellent job in paid search and reach to 100% impression share, exhausting all those search volumes and all that, then uh, you don't have any other viable channel. You either have to go really broad in your keyword search targeting, which you might end up wasting a lot of ad dollars for the keywords that neither convert nor help you to drive demand or create top of mind brand awareness. Uh, or you just keep repeating what everybody else does on uh, paid social, getting a white paper download in exchange of an email address so that you can pass that email address to your sales team, call it that elite, and then your sales team has to chase that email address, that contact that they have no intention to buy, but because you were getting a content and capturing an email address, you call it lead, you pass it to sales, and now they have to chase it and figure it out. So that's a salient problem for B2B brands. So what's the next channels that is going to drive uh, demand? Uh, drive growth and revenue. We believe that channel is connected to the advertising and it is very easy to activate. You can take 
your paid search skills and apply it to connected TV advertising. So let's dig in and learn about those uh, seven best practices. Number one, for paid search, if you want to have a very successful paid search account that drives meaningful results, you need to have a sophisticated account structure. And what do we mean by sophisticated account structure? So a paid search account that actually uh, works, it's not just one campaign and in that one campaign, one ad group, and then just one a single ad, and then you just, and then one type of headline and copy and just a limited number of search them. That's just not how paid search works. Some of the best performing paid search accounts are the ones that are really sophisticated in terms of structures, different type of campaigns within each campaign, different type of ad groups within each ad group, different type of ads and each of ads are really relevant to the search terms uh, targeted within those ads. And so that's basically how a successful uh, uh, paid search ad accounts uh, look like. And within those sophisticated account structures, you have like some broad keyword targetings to go a little bit maybe upper funnel or mid funnel, and you have uh, phrase matches or exact matches to really hit the audience that uh, has high intent for your product and for or for your service. And, and that's the beauty of uh, paid search. Uh, and I have, quite honestly, I think one of the reasons that why us as B2B marketers are obsessed with paid search and the reason for why this is number one channel for all of us is that because it works. And, and that is why Google has such a dominance place in advertising technology space because they are the only platform in the world, in the universe, that they are able to uh, basically understand user intents based on the search terms that uh, are used to find everything. All of us use Google every single day for everything that we need. And by the search term that we are typing, we are telling Google uh, our intention and where we are in that funnel. If I want to give you an example, for example, somebody Googling um, connected TV advertising as a search term, or what is connected TV advertising, or uh, the best connected TV advertising ad platform, or connected TV advertising pricing, all these four different searches, they have different user intents someone searching what is connected TV advertising, they're just curious to learn. So they're upper funnel. Someone searching connected TV advertising, they possibly are familiar. They know a term such as connected TV advertising exists. So they are possibly mid funnel. Someone searching the best connected TV advertising platform or a connected TV advertising uh, pricing, they are really uh, uh, down funnel, they, are, they know that what is connected TV advertising, they know a platform exists for it, and now they're interested to learn about the best platform or they wanna see what's the pricing look like. And, and those are the lower funnels. And with Google paid search, you can uh, arrange those search terms within different campaigns, different ad groups, write different headlines, descriptions, and make your landing page really relevant to those targeted uh, search terms and keywords. And, and for that reason, because the intention of the user is really clear and they are revealing that, that's why paid search works. And that's why we, uh, all of us as B2B marketers, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the number one channel we uh, start to spend on when we decide to uh, do advertising, we do any sort of uh, paid media. Now, uh, let's move on to how we can take the same concept and, and implement it on connected TV uh, advertising. So uh, same concept with connected TV advertising. A successful connected TV advertising ad account is not the one that you have just a single campaign dedicated to prospecting. 
or a single ad campaign dedicated to really lower funnel uh, retargeting. You need to be really comprehensive. You need to have a campaign dedicated hitting uh, upper funnel, a campaign dedicated hitting mid funnel, and also a campaign hitting the lower funnel. And uh, with connected TV advertising, you can do uh, you can run prospecting campaign, and within that prospecting campaign, because you are B two B, you can uh, use different targeting criteria to make sure all of that prospecting is against your core ideal audience. There, with connected TV advertising, there is not such a thing that let's target the entire nation or let's target audiences based on the show that they watch or based on the network that they watch because there's a lot of assumption uh, when you use those targeting criteria. With connected TV advertising, you can target based on job titles. For example, for us, our audience are marketers and advertisers, decision level making. So our prospecting campaign, within that campaign, we are targeting all the marketers, advertisers, uh, from a certain size of companies, decision level, level making, all that targeting criteria that you have today on LinkedIn, uh, you have all of those uh, available. Uh, our partner for audience uh, targeting third-party audiences is Oracle Data Cloud. They are the world largest data provider. So you have uh, unlimited possibilities to be get creative and make sure that you are hitting your target audience. Uh, another targeting criteria for connected TV is uh, CRM. That's something we call matched audience campaigns on, on LinkedIn, for example. You can grab a list of all the contacts that you have in your CRM, Salesforce or other CRM HubSpot, whatever you're using today. You can grab a list of all those contacts, email addresses, upload to Connected TV. Connected TV is going to match those audiences and only those people from your CRM uh, uh, contact list is going to be served Connected TV ads. So no wasted impression. It takes the guesswork out of your audience targeting. Lastly, retargeting. We all do retargeting uh, for paid social. Some of us, we do also in paid search. You can do that also with connected TV advertising. You can uh, uh, have our uh, uh, platform pixel installed on your website, and then we will be uh, able to retarget your website visitors with connected TV ads. This is retargeting is not a new uh, tactic for display advertising for social media. It's as old as 14 years old, uh, but for connected TV advertising, it's pretty new and it's pretty cool because uh, whoever has visited your website, they're a little bit familiar with you. Now, when they're watching their favorite show, when they're just chilling out on their couch, uh, they can also hit them with your connected TV advertising uh, messaging. So, so that that was number one a skill. Uh, create a sophisticated account structure ac across both paid search and connected TV. Let's move on. This is one of my favorite uh, tactics or best practices. Optimize your budget. So I talked about why uh, we believe. Uh, paid search advertising works. And if you're not doing, by the way, if you're not doing paid search advertising today and you have ad dollars to spend, I think you should do. I think that's that should be the number one channel that you have to figure out uh, because it works. The problem is that B2B marketers overdoing this channel because they see that paid search works because it's really, you can hit the lower funnel and it's based on high intent uh, prospects. <clears throat> they end up spending 80 plus percentage of their ad dollars to spend on this channel on paid search. And that is overdoing it. Uh, once again, the, the high intent search terms volumes for B2B is limited. Once you exhaust those opportunities, those low hanging fruits, if you don't have another viable scalable performance channel, you end up going broad. So you end up targeting a lot of broad search terms that is still going to drive impressions and traffic. But conversions, not so much. Uh, 
uh, when you go too broad, you just end up with a lot of wasted uh, impressions uh, and clicks. And, and I think that's, that's uh, where it gets uh, problematic, over-reliance on uh, paid search. Uh, and then when, when I talk to a lot of my B2B uh, uh, peers, they, they say that, well, I don't have uh, enough budget to try a new channel like connected TV advertising. Well, you do. If you, uh, if you take a look at your uh, paid search account and if you uh, basically get rid of a lot of broad search terms that is not moving the needle, not converting anything, not driving even qualified traffic, it's just irrelevant traffic to a website. If you get rid of those, then you will be able to save enough money to try uh, a new channel like connected TV advertising. Like this is what I did back in the day. I think it's still very valuable practice uh, to do. And so I'm gonna just share that with you. Just go to search term on Google, on your Google ad account, go to search term report and sort uh, based on your ad dollars spent. Search all the search, not keywords, but the search terms for, a, uh, for the past 90 days, let's say, or the past 60 days, whatever makes sense for you. Sort based on the spend for each of the search terms and then see for each of those search terms, if what are the conversions? Uh, are they converting or not converting? Grab those search terms, put it in the Google and see what are the results. If the Google uh, page results for those search terms that you are spending the most, you don't see that much of conversions. If you look at the results and see that they are not really hitting the user intent and they're not, the results is not relevant to what you offer, you need to add those to your negative term uh, uh, keyword lists. And by just doing that exercise, I promise you that you will save enough money to be able to activate your uh, connected TV advertising channel uh, the day after. So uh, this is pretty cool tactic. It worked for us. Try it out. I am positive that it will work for you too. So once you do that exercise, once you get rid of some of the broad search terms that are not moving the needle, now you can um, try a new channel like connected TV advertising. And in fact, if you do it in the right way, this will help you also with the paid search uh, advertising that you do. How does uh, it help? So paid search advertising is great for capturing the existing demand. Whoever is already familiar with what you offer or your brand, when they have a need for your uh, service, your product or your solution, they're going to go to Google are they going to Google your brand or are they going to Google something relevant to what you offer? For us, is connected TV advertising. The, anybody going to Google typing connected TV advertising, they already have demand to uh, learn about connected TV advertising or become a client. So Google is doing nothing creating that demand. Google is just capturing that existing demand that possibly created somewhere else. Now, connected TV advertising is an ideal channel to create new demand. You can target your core audience based on those audience targeting criteria and uh, hit your uh, target audience with, on, with connected TV ad on the largest screen in the house at a time that they are relaxed in front of TV, catching their favorite show, they're open, to, uh, to be told a story because they're already watching a, a show and that's a perfect moment in time to, uh, to uh, they might as well uh, uh, listen to your story. Ads are not as capable, 30 second, 15 second uh, ads on the premium networks and, and, uh, and inventory. That's why we believe uh, connected TV advertising is uh, an ideal channel to create new demand and once that demand is created, they're gonna go to Google. They remember you, they remember who is Mountain. They know that you're in connected TV advertising. They're gonna search and Google is going to capture that existing demand that was created not by Google, but uh, somewhere else. And in this case, 
uh, that somewhere else was connected to the advertising. That was uh, number two uh, best practice that you could borrow from uh, paid search and take it to uh, connected TV advertising. In fact, case in point, one of our uh, clients, National Business Furniture, which are a B2B company selling furniture to businesses, they saw an uh, increase in uh, number of assisted com conversions. They saw increase in conversion value across both paid search and social media. So 61% lift in assisted conversions on paid search by just activating connected TV, adding connected TV to their media mix. 86% increase in conversions value by uh, activating connected TV and uh, also uh, even better results for Facebook, 80% lift in assisted conversions, uh, number of conversions and 131% lift in convergence value. So connected TV is basically uh, one of the, the channels that you need to run uh, as the third pillar, first pillar being paid search, second pillar being paid social, and then connected by activating connected TV, you're going to drive new demand that is going to be captured on paid search, but it also is going to help uh, driving uh, conversions, qualified traffic across other channels, LinkedIn, Facebook, because it's the same audience that you're just targeting them across uh, different channels. Let's move on to number three. Use your existing keyboard targets uh, to learn more about your audience. So by looking at search term report, you're going to learn so much about your audience. We're going to learn what type of search terms are converting, what uh, type of search terms are driving impressions but not clicks, uh, which ones are driving traffic to a website but not converting, and so there's so much to learn from uh, broad search terms, exact search terms, phrase search terms. And I believe figuring out paid search is honestly finding that sweet spot, finding that balance, like how broad you need to go, how much you need to go lower funnel with exact keywords or mid funnel with uh, phrase keyword match matches and all that. So it's a balance between high intent, lower funnel, and uh, in some cases uh, might make sense to go broad. Not something I always suggest to my uh, fellow B2B marketers uh, to go broad on search terms. I believe paid search, paid search is really great on capturing high intent, lower funnel uh, uh, users. I think for upper funnel and mid funnel, you can rely on other channels to create demand. But uh, you can learn so much about your audience by just looking at uh, those search term results and the performance of those search terms. By looking at the search term results, you can take those learnings and implement it to connected TV advertising. So for a, 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 a prospecting campaign, you can learn like what type of audience targeting you want to use for connected TV. And uh, you can also have the same approach, like upper funnel, mid funnel, lower funnel. So prospecting, CRM, retargeting, upper funnel, mid funnel, lower funnel. And, uh, and I think paid search keywords, it's a great source to figure out your targeting criteria on connected TV. And, uh, and, uh, and that's uh, number three. Uh, using your existing uh, keywords to basically learn about uh, some of the concepts that you already didn't know. You didn't know that this type of audience targeting might be relevant, but paid search is telling you because that's what uh, uh, users are searching and they're telling a lot about their uh, intents too. Let's move on to uh, number four, A-B test to find what works. As performance marketers, as digital marketers, we all love A-B testing. Uh, for paid search, paid social, uh, we all do a lot of uh, A-B testing to figure out what messaging works best. For paid search, it's about uh, testing ad copies, landing pages, and also testing out different beta strategies. 
what bid strategy is relevant for you? Should you optimize against conversions, traffic, uh, highest impressions? You need to do a lot of tests to figure out which bid strategy work, which landing ex landing page experience works the best, and you probably need to have different type of landing pages for different ad groups, campaigns, and ads. Same with the ad copy. Headline descriptions, you need to change that all the time to find out that sweet spot that is really hitting the spot, uh, capturing those high intent users on, uh, on Google for paid search. Same concept for connected TV advertising. And this is really exciting because we never think that it's possible. It's a possibility to test two video creatives now for TV advertising. We can test uh, video creatives. We can also test different audiences. So you can have uh, different campaigns, each campaign using different audience targeting criteria. Maybe one is using job titles and functions. The other one is using some interest-based targeting criteria. like users being interested in marketing softwares or users being interested in financial services technology softwares, or if you have a solution for HR management, whatever it is, you can categorize those audience targeting criteria across different campaigns, segment based on those audiences and see which audience is performing better. You can do an A-B test and also same with creative, you can see which creative is uh, driving uh, higher performance, and then you can adjust your budget allocations across those creatives or audiences that you have tested. Let's move on. Number five, make relevancy a key component. And take a sip of water. Make relevancy a key component. So when it comes to paid search, uh, we are obsessed with the notion of uh, relevancy. So how Google paid search work is based on ad scores. And ad is, ads, paid search ads are scored by Google based on relevancy. And, and relevancy, when you think about relevancy on paid search, you should think about a triangle. Uh, and that triangle is between the search term that user putting on Google, your headline and description, which shows on the Google page result, and the landing page experience that when they click, they land on. So these three elements, you need to make sure that they are perfectly relevant. There should be 100% relevancy between users, search term, your headline and description, and also the landing page experience. That's why we mentioned it's important to have a sophisticated account structure to be able to do that level of personalization. There are even solutions, tools out there that it makes your landing pages customized based on the search term. That's the reason for why those tools exist because it matters for Google. The relevancy matters. And all the ads are scored based on that relevancy. The higher the relevancy, the higher scores for the ads, and, and then you will end up paying less when it comes to beats uh, against if other advertisers are targeting the exact same keywords that you are targeting. If you, your ad has higher scores, then uh, you will end up paying less in that beat and you're gonna win that auction, that beat, and then your ads are served. So it's really important to, to nail it down uh, to drive better performance on, on paid search. Same concept, same notion for uh, connected TV advertising. Re relevancy is just as important. Uh, for connected TV advertising, we have uh, a video creative that you upload into the ad platform. We have audience extension, which are the uh, corresponding display ads. And also we have the landing page experience that when they click on those audience extension ads, they will land on. So again, three elements video creative, uh, audience extension, which are the corresponding display ads and the landing page experience. They all need to align. They all need to be relevant. Your display ads need to be relevant to the video creative and the landing page experience need to be relevant to both display ads 
and also the video creative. Uh, because you are targeting your audience on TV, that audience is using their second device, being a mobile, tablet, phone, laptop, whatever it is, uh, to uh, browse through the internet. And you have the opportunity to hit them with the relevant display ads relevant to the video creative that they have seen. Same audience. And, and when they click on those display ads, the landing page experience need to uh, align uh, for those three. And if you do it that way, then uh, it's just going to drive a uh, better performance. And um, so this, this is very important. The same concept of relevancy. Uh, let's borrow that uh, from paid search and take it to connected TV. Number six, maintain brand safety. Brand safety is, is an issue for a lot of marketers and advertisers. And uh, when you launch Google paid search, we're never worried about uh, uh, brand safe safety because the result of the search is appearing on Google. And, and that's a safe space because it's just Google. There's no, I'm not talking about GDN Google Display Network. I'm just purely talking about, talking about Google uh, paid search results. Google paid search results is a safe space. You don't need to be worried about where your ads are shown. So there is no uh, concern for brand safety when you launch that. If you are uh, concerned about, if you are going uh, phrase match targeting and you are concerned about a specific uh, search term on keywords, you can always add them as negative keywords. So they will never, uh, your uh, copy or uh, uh, link will never, your brand will never be shown next to those uh, negatively targeted keywords. So you can mitigate that minimal concern that you might have for brand safety. Same uh, concept, same idea for uh, connected TV advertising. When you go live on connected TV advertising, uh, it's a brand safety heaven. There is no concern that this is not YouTube advertising. When you do YouTube advertising, you need to be worried about where your ads are served. There might be some random people where they have a lot of uh, hundreds of thousands of views and then suddenly your ads are shown in their uh, belly dancing channel or something absolutely uh, irrelevant or obnoxious to your brand. But for connected TV advertising, especially if you work with a, a platform that have inventory on premium networks, then you have zero concern for brand safety because your ads are shown on premium networks, ESPN, Discovery Channel, all the major news streaming channels, CNN, CNBC, all the above. And, um, and, and for that reason, because it, it's a curated uh, top networks and channels, you don't have that brand safety concern. Ads are not as keepable, unlike YouTube, that I cannot wait for that five seconds uh, to, to hit the skip ad button. Uh, unlike, unlike that, ads are not as keepable, uh, only served uh, during the episodic uh, shows over 22 minutes. So for that reason, connected TV advertising is a brand safety heaven. And, um, and this is another characteristics that is shared between paid search and connected TV advertising. All right, last, but definitely not the least, before we get to the uh, questions and answers, uh, remove creative barriers. So another reason for why as B2B marketers love paid search is that there, there is no creative barriers. Like your creative is essentially uh, just your ad copy, it's just the text. And, and you can do a lot of different tests. You can change it, see what headline, what description works. There are some best practices, but it's not really that um, difficult. You, you need um, uh, uh, skilled content marketers as, as we do at Mountain to, to be able to uh, craft those uh, 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 text ads for you. But uh, it's it's not a video, obviously. So there is no uh, a creative barrier. For that reason, 
We love uh, doing a lot of uh, paid search. Creative management is easy when you want to change, update, edit. Uh, that's the, you can do that instantly. You don't have to deal with uh, uh, a, a team uh, to to be able to do that. Now let's talk about connected TV advertising. So, and this possibly is one of the barriers that a lot of my fellow B2B marketers, when they think about TV advertising, is that well, I don't have uh, a video creative, or I have a video creative, but I don't think that's uh, suitable or relevant for uh, TV advertising. First of all, with uh, CTV advertising, you might be able to use your existing video asset that you are currently running on LinkedIn and Facebook and the other social channels. You might be able to repurpose and use those video assets. Or if you don't have uh, any video asset, uh, you can actually use uh, one of those marketplace solutions. Uh, QuickFrame is a video production marketplace. They have a network of video creators. You go there, you define your video project, and then uh, uh, they will be able to uh, deliver you that uh, creative. If you have higher budget and you want something really high production, uh, Ryan Reynolds Creative Agency Maximum Effort is now part of the mountain, and uh, they are creating uh, the most creative uh, type of uh, uh, TV creatives that you can possibly think of. That's also uh, possible if if you guys are want to like really upscale your video production. That's those are the two possibilities, and for that reason, and then you don't have to deal with any creative agency. You don't have to deal with any media agency. You get your video creative from QuickFrame, Max Effort, or from your social team. You go to our platform, target your audience, upload your video ad, set your budget, and you are live. You are instantly live across all those premium network channels. You are instantly making yourself different than any other, uh, your B2B peers and competitors. And, and you start creating new demand from your relevant audience. You don't need to be worried about, worry about media placements and upfront and media buying and all that. It's just everything is through a platform, those three steps. I have launched CTV campaigns in less than five minutes. Just choose your audience, upload your video creative, set your budget and your life and start measuring performance on Google Analytics the day after. So this concludes our seven best practices uh, that are applicable from uh, paid search. These are the skills, best practices that we already use on paid search, we're familiar, but these are relevant to um, connected TV. Just a quick recap before we go to Q&A. Number one, make sure you have a sophisticated campaign structure. That's true for paid search and also for connected TV advertising. There is no such a thing as one campaign, one ad group, one ad, a limited number of search term on paid search for connected TV advertising, same. You need to have different campaigns, different targeting criteria to hit the entire funnel. Number two, optimize your budget. Paid search works for B2B. Let's do it, but let's not overdo it. Let's take a look at what doesn't work on paid search. Let's get rid of those broad search terms that are not moving the needle. Let's save some money for connected to the advertising. Let's tr let's at least try it for two, three months and see what happens. Uh, so that's that's the idea. I have seen like digital marketers crushing their, their games are the ones that are open to experiment with new with new channels. And, and that's that's the place to, to save money. Number three. Use your existing uh, target uh, keyboard targets. There's so much to learn by looking at search term uh, 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 reports on, on Google Ad. There's so much that you can learn about your audience and you can uh, take those learnings and use it as uh, targeting criterias on connected TV advertising. Number four, A-B testing. Uh, we are obsessed with this notion of A-B test testing across all the channels. We do it on social. We do it on paid search. Let's do it on connected TV advertising too, because that's possible. You can uh, test different video creatives. You can test uh, different audiences. Number five, 
make relevancy a key component. Relevancy is number one tip for paid search. Make sure your search terms are relevant to the copy, headline, and description, and make sure those two are 100% relevant to the landing page experience. Same concept for connected TV advertising. Let's make sure the video creative is relevant to the um, display ads, the audience extension display ads, and let's make sure the landing page experience aligns with those two elements. Number six, brand safety uh, is not a concern on paid search. Same concept with connected TV advertising. It's a curated uh, 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 private network of the premium channels. So you're not uh, placing your ads on some irrelevant um, user created channels, uh, unlike YouTube and uh, some other um, channels. Last but not the least, uh, th there is no creative barrier on paid search because your creative is just your uh, ad copy. Same with connected TV advertising. Uh, those years and days are gone that you needed a uh, high budget, you need a creative agency, and it would take a month to have a video creative and then you had to figure it out with another agency, a media agency, uh, you no longer have those barriers. Quick frame, maximum efforts are two viable options. If you don't have creative, your social team might already have a social video creative that might work for connected TV advertising. Our platform experts will be able to uh, help you with that, telling you whether that uh, social video is suitable for connected TV advertising or not. Thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, I would love to keep the conversation uh, forward. Let's get connected. Uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn, hit me an email. Uh, would love to be in conversation and uh, and um, share whatever has worked uh, for us. Ready for Q and A? Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Human. Uh, really good presentation. So there's definitely a few questions in here. There's one early on um, that it, the question was, "What does affordable mean on QuickFrame? Can you provide a bit more specific specificity?" in terms of minimum budget for creative, example, two 30 second videos or 30 highly relevant ads? Yeah, I think um, for video creatives, like it's something within $5,000, $10,000, you can get decent video creatives. If you spend a little bit more, you will get a nice batch of video creatives, different variations that you can use on different channels with the specs that works for social and all that. You also get uh, 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 some uh, basics for connected TV advertising. That's that's the minimum uh, for for video creatives. But if the just to be clear, if the question is what's the minimum to in terms of like ad dollars spent on platform on connected TV advertising, the minimum we suggest is twenty five thousand uh, dollar per month to start and to try. Uh, uh, and that is at dollars to spend. Uh, that is separate from video uh, uh, creation or production. So just wanted to be clear that um, there is a distinction between uh, creating a video and the at dollars to spend to actually run it on connected TV. Good question. Got it. So um, another question, um, and please from the audience, we'll, we definitely got have um, at least five more minutes. So if you've got questions, pop them into the Q&A, um, but here's another one. Um, which countries slash regions are available to target with CTV ads platforms? Uh, well, I can speak to our uh, platform, Mountain. Uh, with Mountain Performance TV, uh, today it's only uh, the US. Uh, it might be available in other uh, part of the world at some point, but uh, today it's uh, the US only. Got it. Um, we, uh, here's a question. We can target our keywords on TV, question mark. Um, how does that work? What kind of targeting is available? Uh, well, there are um, so many various uh, targeting capabilities. You can use third-party audiences 
Oracle Data Cloud is our partner. You can use, so if you're B2B, I don't know what's your business, but if you're B2B, you can do based on job titles, functions, company size, uh, co company revenue. You can do ge geographical uh, location targeting to the zip code level, not just DMA, uh, which was relevant for linear TV advertising. So that's, uh, you can do interest-based targeting. You can do intent-based targeting. Uh, those are all third-party uh, audience targeting criteria. Or you can take the guesswork out of your audience targeting. Just grab a list of your contact uh, addresses or emails that you have. If the size is good, like 80,000 emails that you have on your CRM, let's just grab that list, upload it to our platform, and then our platform is just going to match those email addresses. And so it's exact. It, this is great for ABM. Your ads is going to be served only against those uh, 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 contacts with the right title from the right company. Your sales team is going to love that because then it just, just make their job easier when they're reaching out. And then lastly is retargeting. You can retarget your website uh, uh, visitor. Got it. Um, so another question, uh, what types of CTAs have you seen to be successful with CTV in the B2B space? That's a good question. Love that question. It's like a really performance marketing, digital marketing type of a question. CTA, important, always. Uh, our uh, platform experts uh, have put together this like best practices. And so we always suggest to have your uh, URL uh, available on the, on the TV ad. Like for example, on our uh, connected TV ads, we always have mountain.com. And then uh, the CTA varies. Like for example, for us, it's always um, uh, learn more, request a demo. I think Ryan Reynolds created uh, two, a uh, couple of video creatives for us. And in all of them, he mentions that uh, go to mountain.com and request a demo today. So that's, that's the call to action that he uh, used in those video creatives and it worked uh, for us. Um, so looking back through some of these chat questions, a um, couple of questions we kind of already answered. Um, oh, someone's asking how, if uh, you can share the slides. Uh, sure, uh, I think. We we can send that uh, yeah we can email uh, we can email you guys the the deck either through Mountain or through Ascent but we'll find a way to to get the deck to you guys hundred percent and also uh, uh, this video the recording will be available on our website pretty soon I think on Wednesday we're gonna get it and then get it uploaded uh, if you go to Mountain.com uh, you will be able to uh, uh, let me also share this as a uh, I don't know if you have time for that or not, but we'll send you some additional materials with our uh, follow-up email. Another question um, that just came in. I've been hearing about fraud on connected TV. Is it actually safe to run on TV? Uh, it's a good question. So uh, fraud exists like, uh, and on um, all the digital channels, on connected TV is not as significant of an issue that it was it is uh, on the other digital channels and uh, mobile devices and all that. Uh, there were some fraud scams back in 2020 and 2021, uh, but the number and the amounts are not even comparable with the other digital channels. However, if you work with a connected TV advertising platform that they have a, uh, created a private marketplace, they call it PMP, then uh, fraud is a minimal concern because then it, your ads are just served on those premium networks and channels and not on a fraudulent, possibly fraudulent channel. So 
Using Mountain Performance TV, fraud should not be a concern because we have created a PMP, private marketplace, a curated network of top uh, networks and channels. Good question, though. Got it. So um, there are a few more questions, but we're kind of running up on time here. But um, how are results in terms of B to C? Uh, the results are uh, fantastic, amazing. That's our uh, core uh, business, Mountain Performance TV, is really driving uh, uh, great results for direct-to-consumer brands, for B2C brands, and uh, that's a bulk of um, uh, our our business today. B2B is fairly new, uh, and um, we have a ton of case studies on our websites that. Uh, share some of the results for specific B2C uh, clients, verticals, and all that. So I highly recommend checking out our website. Go to resources. There are a lot of blogs, case studies uh, that you can enjoy and learn more. Awesome. <clears throat> and I know we're a little over time, but do you have time for one more question? Yes, let's do it. Uh, can you set a frequency level with Mountain? That's a good question. So, uh, like frequency ad fatigue is uh, is like a phenomenon that exists. Like it's as long as the history of TV advertising. Frequency and ad fatigue is also uh, uh, a phenomenon that exists. With our platform, uh, marketers do not need to be worried about setting up all of those elements because our platform is going to optimize your campaign to drive the highest performance and. Uh, whatever frequency is dictated by that uh, 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 auto optimization and bidding process, programmatic uh, process behind that, uh, that's going to dictate the frequency. So mark, technically it's possible, but that's not something that uh, as a performance marketer, as a digital advertiser, you need to be worried about. You need to be worried about hitting your exact target audience, make sure that you have a good creative uh, relevant budget and you're just majoring, doing a lot of A-B testing, that should be really your concern rather than uh, setting up um, ad frequency. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Human. I think this was super informative for the audience. It definitely was for me. Um, it's kind of like a, a new world. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, and I think our audience got a lot out of this presentation. So we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Appreciate your kind words.